In modern times we take coins and paper money for granted. In the ancient world, however, people assign monetary value to a wide variety of objects. While most wouldn't be practical today, they still serve as a reminder of these ancient cultures and their richly diverse customs. 10 edible currency has long been used as a form of currency throughout the world. The word salary is actually derived from the Latin word salarium, which was the Roman word for money used to buy salt. In fact, salt was the primary currency in East Africa throughout the Middle Ages. Another form of edible currency was Parmigiano cheese. At one point this beloved cheese was actually accepted as bank collateral in Italy. In Central America, the cocoa bean was the food currency of choice. In Central Asia, they used These bricks were actually preferred in Mongolia because they could be brewed or even eaten as a source of nourishment. Nine Katanga crosses this X-shaped trinket is known as a dot it originated in the mining region of Katanga in the Democratic Republic of Congo. These crosses were the region's primary form of currency and likely the most widely known form of ancient African currency. The crosses were cast from copper and weighed anywhere from 1 to 2.5 pounds. Often seen as symbols of great wealth, the crosses were used in all forms of bartering trade. It was even common for a person to be dot, since they were made from copper and quite large, the crosses could also be melted and remolded as tools if needed. Is value-wise, one cross could fetch you approximately 22 pounds of flour. Eight squirrel pelts unfortunately for squirrels, Russians had taken a liking to during the Middle Ages. And the Russians, not a group to waste anything, used the claws and snouts for pocket change. This odd form of currency may have accidentally benefited the Russians in a non-economic way as well. Since the plague was most often carried by rodents, murdering a bunch of rodents and using their pelts as currency likely reduced the number of plague carriers. Modern-day Finland actually has a currency and values them at 3 cents each. Seven potato mashers were a form of ancient currency in the region where the Republic of Cameroon is today. This strange currency was highly regarded and used in the most important trades in the ancient Bavian culture. The use of the potato mashers also suggests that the Bavians had some very interesting views on gender. For example, wives could be bought and sold for a set price in this instance. Dot six Lobi snakes the Lobi were the ancient inhabitants of Ghana. They lived as farmers and spent most of their time in the fields where they encountered a variety of snakes. To protect themselves, they that were either worn on their person or placed on personal altars, just like garlic for scaring off vampires. They were such a focal point of the Lobby culture that the iron snakes were often used in trading and bartering. Five kissy pennies until recently, the kissy pennies were used, as in many parts of Western Africa. These long strips of iron were modeled by blacksmiths into a distinct T shape. On one end there was an ear, which resembled the shape of a spade or hoe. On the other end was a foot. The typical kissy penny was over a foot in length and, if broken, could not be used again without an elaborate ceremony. 
Due to the low value of individual pieces, they were usually bundled in groups of about 20. At one time, a bag of oranges or bananas cost only one or two kissy pennies. But prices inflated as the pennies were phased out of use. During this time, the cost of a cow rose to over 100 bundles, while a kissy bride would cost you about 200. For rings and jewelry for the most part, the economy in ancient Egypt was tightly controlled and organized. But until the late period in Egyptian history, they did not use traditional coin currency. Three potlet che was an extravagant celebration in the ancient world, where people would exchange almost anything in the spirit of gift giving. Such ceremonies took place all over the world, but were a mainstay among Native Americans. For example, whale's teeth were a common item used in the Fijian Islands, while feathers were a staple of the Native American potlatch. These lavish events often accompanied other important occurrences, such as a birth or marriage. Oftentimes, the initially light-spirited occasion would escalate into a competition of wealth and vanity, with each person trying to outdo the next with a more impressive gift. The largest potlatch took place when the Queen of Sheba gifted King Solomon 120 talents of gold and the largest quantity of spices ever exchanged at the time. Approximately 2,500 years ago, a Chinese prince allowed his troops to use their knives as payment for goods when money was scarce. After the troops began bartering with local villagers, the concept caught on and soon became a standard form of currency. They were most widely used in China during the Zhu dynasty, between 600 and 200 BC, and were often worth one in, so that the knives could be carried conveniently on belts and straps. One rice stones the largest form of currency in the ancient world was known as the These gargantuan stones, pictured above, were carved from a single piece of limestone. They each had a signature hole in the middle, measured up to 12 feet across, and weighed over 8 tons. Each rise stone a story of its own that determined its value. Since the creation of each was such a massive undertaking, the difficulty experienced along the way would increase the value of this stone. The villagers canoeing to a neighboring island, where limestone could be found, then the discs had to be carved and painstakingly carried back to the village, again, via canoe. One of the canoes sank once, and the stone that was lost was still a part of the economy. They just recognized the stone as being out in the ocean and ownership of it changed. None of the stones ever actually moved since they were so heavy, they just acquired a new owner and remained in the same location. If a villager died in the process of carving or transporting the stone, which was not uncommon, its value increased. Because of the significant amount of time and effort put into each stone, transfers from one villager to the next could only be done following an elaborate ceremony. Ross is a patent agent and a list for Stan, 